this is the second video looking at individual demand curves and the relation to market demand curves. And in this video, we'll be looking at elasticity, right? the elasticity of the market demand curve and comparing that to the elasticities of different individuals in that market, right? the elasticities of the individuals who make up the market demand curve. And so in this situation, this is a follow-up to the previous uh, situation where, or the previous problem, where we looked at um, how much different individuals purchased at two different prices and how that affected the entire market, right? And when we ran through the uh, situation of equations there, we saw that at price of three, 10 was demanded in the market as a total, and at price of two, 14 was demanded, and that's how the two quantities broke down between the different individuals. Now in this one, we're gonna look at elasticities. And elasticity is a little bit of a complicated problem, but it's not a hard problem, right? Elasticity, what we're looking at is a change in the quantity uh, demanded over a change in the price, right? What's the responsiveness of price to quantity? And this is the formula that we can use to basically plug and chug through the information to get to our elasticities. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run through it with these different uh, equations and we will um, see what we get for our results. So I'll tabulate the different elasticities as we go through this. So for the first one, let's do the market demand curve, the elasticity for the market. And in this case, right, we have our market demand and, right, for the two prices. So when I erase that, we'll start here. Elasticity of my market, all right, um, Right, Q2 is 14 minus Q1, 10, divided by 14 plus 10, all in brackets, divided by 2. And then we have our prices, right? Price 2 is 2 minus price 1, which is 3, all over 2 plus 3, divided by 2. Pretty simple math from here on out, right? This will become four over 14 plus 10 is 24 divided by two, which is 12, divided by two minus three is a minus one, but remember in elasticities, we're looking at absolute values. So this will just simply be a one over three divided by, uh, two plus three is Five divided by two is two and a half. So let's further do the math here using my handy calculator here. So we have uh, four divided by 12, right? Which will be one fourth or 0.33. And uh, one divided by 2.5 is 0.4. And so 0.33 divided by 0.4 is going to give me an elasticity of my market of 0.825. Okay, that's my elasticity for my market. And why don't I put that into my chart right here under my elasticities? which would be 0 0.8, we'll just go to the second place, two. That's my market elasticity. But my elasticities for my different individuals won't be this because as you can see, they all had different responses to the changes in price. So let's go back and start to work through our different individuals, okay? now. Um, let's work through our first individual, individual number one, right? Elasticity for the per first person, well, we have our quantities, six minus four, six plus four divided by two, all over. This, this part here, our prices are the change, right? Since for each part of this range, we're looking at the same prices, we know already that this is going to be 0 0.4. Right? We've calculated that already when we did our market. So we don't need to recalculate. We simply have to deal with the top part. Right? This would be 
2, right? 6 plus 4 is 10, right? 5, 0 0.4, right? 2 divided by 5, we'll take out our calculator, do it again, right? This will be 0 0.4, 0 0.4, which equals 1. For individual number 1, we have a unitary elastic, right? They are unitary elastic, they are not, right, for every increase of price, they're reducing, right? So, that's our first person. How about our second person? Individual number two. Well, again, we know the bottom half of the equation is going to be 0 0.4. Top part of the equation? Well, let's run through it. 6 minus 5 all over 6 plus 5 divided by 2, right? This will equal 1 over 11 uh, divided by 2, right? 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. Actually, well, we rewrite it this way. 1 over 5.5, all divided by 0 0.4. If we figure this out, right, uh, 1 divided by 5.5 equals 0 0.18. If we do uh, 0.18 divided by 0.4, that will give us a elasticity of 0 0.45. What you can see for this person, they are much more inelastic at 4.5. And I mean, this, this makes sense, right? For the first person, right, when the price went down, they increased their demand a lot. For the second person, they didn't increase their demand all that much, right? It was a much more, it wasn't as responsive a change. It was much more uh, inelastic, right? <clears throat> right? Inelastic, right? Anything less than one is inelastic. That will bring us down to our last person. Now with this last person, right? When the price went down, they actually doubled their increase. That's a significant increase here. This person will probably have a more elastic demand curve. Let's check it out. Elasticity equals, right? Same 0.4 underneath here. For the top part, we have 2 minus 1 all over 2 plus 1 bracket divided by 2. Right? 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 plus 1 uh, divided by 2 is a 3 divided by 2 over 0 0.4. Right? Um, 3, divi 3 divided by 2 equals 1.5. 1 divided by 1.5 equals. 0 0.66, right? 0 0.66, 0 0.66, divided by 0.4 is 1.65. This is really elastic. So for this third person, it is 1.65. So what you can see here is that in this market, right, we have a general elasticity. In general, the market is on the inelastic side. However, two, right, one person is unitary elastic and one person is actually quite elastic. So it's just that one person in the market is quite inelastic, but they buy an awful lot in the market, so they have an awful lot more influence on the overall market elasticity. But this is an important thing, right? When we think about a market, remember that the demand side of a market is made up of lots of individuals. 
and that within that market, right, there is a specific demand elasticity, but that responsiveness is actually differing depending on who is in the market. Okay, and so that's, again, an important thing to keep in mind with economics is that we talk about the whole market side, right, the whole demand curve, but the demand curve is made up of individuals, and different individuals have different preferences, and they respond to things in different ways.